Are you guys as confused as I am about Burrito Gate? I had to search all over the place to make heads or tails if a person can actually test positive for doping from eating a burrito. Say what? I will run you guys through what I found after this. Okay guys, so before we get into this, I wanna take a second and just say that it pains me to have to make this video. Being a dad of an aspiring athlete in football and track and field, I had to pause and think about how much this kind of stuff comes up from high school to the pros. I mean, my kiddo loves his carnitas burritos from Chipotle. Could eating one of these really give him a false positive? So like many of you, and as a dad and a fan of running, I wanted this test so bad to be a false positive. Shelby Houlihan is a talented runner and I was looking forward to seeing her run in the Olympic Games. There was just so much confusion surrounding this situation, so many reporters getting this story completely wrong. Houlihan's fans are insistent that we don't have all the evidence and shouldn't rush to judgment. The only problem is we do have all the evidence from what I can find online. And the pieces just don't add up. The PR blitz from Nike seems to be working. Most of the media repeated all their talking points and didn't challenge their claims at all. It almost got USA track and field to allow Houlihan to run in the trials, basically saying that they can just disqualify her after the fact. That is until the athletic integrity unit stepped in to stop it. So with that said, here are the facts. On June 14, the world found out about the four-year ban of Shelby Houlihan for testing positive for the performance-enhancing drug Nandrolone, essentially ending her competitive running career. Houlihan is a Nike athlete and member of the famed Bauer Men Track Club, named after one of the founders of Nike. During a press conference and on her Instagram, she released a statement claiming that this positive test result was due to consuming a burrito 10 hours before her drug test. Shelby wrote on Instagram, on January January 14, 2021, I received an email from the Athletic Integrity Unit informing me a drug testing sample that I provided on December 15, 2020 has returned as an adverse analytical finding for an anabolic steroid called Nandrolone, and that I am therefore subject to an immediate provisional suspension. Houlihan claims that when she got the email, she created a food log and found that she had eaten a burrito from a Mexican food truck 10 hours before her test, and that truck also serves pig offal, essentially pig organs, and that that was the source of the nandrolone. After the press conference, Will Gagan on Twitter noticed that the statement was carefully worded to lead people to think that she ate a pork burrito, when in fact it was a carne asada burrito, which begs the question, can you have a false positive from eating a burrito? burrito? And the answer is sort of. There was a study in 2000 that did confirm that consuming 310 grams or two-thirds of a pound of non-castrated male pork can induce a false positive. This fact makes Houlihan's claim. Houlihan is not the first athlete to use the pork defense after failing drug tests. Tennis player Robert Farah and boxer Tyson Fury also using the pork defense. Fury even went so far as to say, and this is totally true, claimed that he and his cousin ate an entire boar every week. The problem with Houlihan's claim is that she doesn't claim that she ate a pork burrito. She claims that she ate a carne asada burrito from a truck that also served pig offal. Essentially, she's saying it's cross-contamination, but that doesn't explain how you get two-thirds of a pound of pig awful intestines essentially in a burrito and still think you're eating carne asada. Here are some other claims that don't quite add up for me. Articles keep saying she tested positive for trace amounts of nandrolone. I don't think you can call 250% over the allowed limit to be trace amounts. That's just me. Houlihan claimed to have the receipt for the burrito. I suppose it's, it is possible she kept a receipt for one burrito a month before she found out about her test results. However, I'm not so sure and would love to have this be true, but again, maybe. Houlihan claimed when she got the email of her positive test in January, she went back and created a food log from a month before. How do you create a food log from a month before? If she had claimed that she reviewed her food log, this would imply that she keeps a food log, something plausible for an elite athlete, but that she doesn't. She claims this food log that she created after the fact brought her to the conclusion that a carne asada burrito purchased from a Mexican food truck was cross-contaminated with pig offal. 
Maybe Hulihan has an incredible memory. I know I couldn't go back a month and create an accurate food log for an entire week, but apparently she keeps her all her receipts, so maybe. Hulihan and her coach, Jerry Schumacher, both claim that they've never heard of Nangelo. Houlihan wrote on Instagram, when I got that email, I had to read it over about 10 times and Google what it was that I had tested positive for. I have never even heard of Nangelo. This is not likely, but maybe she hasn't. Between 2004 and 2018, at least 50 Kenyan athletes have tested positive for Nandrolo. When your entire life and career revolves around running, you're gonna know these type of things. You have to, it's part of the job. So were there questions about Shelby Houlihan before this doping test result? And the answer is yes. Last year, Jamie Langley asked Shelby on Twitter, hi Shelby, what changed from 2016 finishing 11th in the Olympics to running 1434 in 2018 and now running 1423. You are clearly much leaner and more muscular now. So he's essentially saying, how do you go from a middle of the pack runner to breaking records in four years? And surprisingly, Shelby responded to him saying, a few things changed in those years. Diet improved, increase in mileage each year, adjusted to higher intensity training. 2016 was first year as a pro and also first year ever truly running the 5k and great gained confidence in myself most importantly never got injured this is the answer every athlete would give though i couldn't help but find it just a little ironic that she cites her diet as a reason for improvement and then later the reason why she tested positive for nandrolo probably one of the most glaring omissions from most of the articles that I read was they completely ignored Nike's recent history of doping. They say the best indicator of future behavior is past behavior, so it is very questionable to me that almost no one in the media brought up the Nike Organ Project. This isn't ancient history. Less than two years ago, the Alberto Salazar doping scandal happened, which caused Nike to permanently shut down their other track club, the Organ Project. And Nike is still standing by Salazar, by the way, and completely completely funding his appeal. They're even doing this after Mary Kay publicly accused Salazar of creating a toxic culture that broke her. Very sad story, I will put a link in the description below. I don't understand how you can have a coach suspended for doping and have every athlete under him clean. Not one athlete ever tested positive for performance enhancing drugs under Salazar. In OregonLive.com article summed up Sal the Salazar situation like this. Quote, Nike ridiculed the anti-doping agency ruling and Salazar vowed he was innocent and promised to appeal. If you take that quote and change Salazar to Houlihan, you pretty much sum up the Houlihan press conference. Over the course of the past six months, I've learned more than I ever wanted to know about drug testing, about the procedures and organizations that govern our sport. What I've learned has eroded all the faith I had in their ability to fairly serve and protect clean athletes. Throughout this process, we were confident that the truth would lead to justice. What I've come to learn instead is that anti-doping authorities are okay with convicting innocent athletes so long as nine out of 10 convictions are legitimate. That is wrong. I wanna be very clear. I've never taken any performance enhancing substances and that includes that of which I'm being accused. I believe in the sport and I believe in pushing your body to the limit just to see where that limit is. I'm not interested in cheating. I'm gonna continue to fight to prove my innocence. Winning at all costs seems to be baked into Nike's DNA. 40 years ago, Rob Strasser, the swoosh's first marketing head, put out a memo that included the lines, break the rules, fight the law, which seems to be exactly what they're doing in both Salazar and the Houlihan's case. If you're interested in learning more about the culture at Nike, there's a new documentary, which I haven't seen yet, but I heard it's really good, that came out called Nike's Big Bet. I have put a link to the trailer in the description below. Okay, so there you have it. Do you believe Houlihan's story? Is Nike getting a bum rap here? Leave a comment below, let me know. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and please consider subscribing. I am still trying to get to that magic 100 subscriber mark so I can have a pretty URL. All right guys, run positive and have a great week and I hope to see you again.